Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. My name is Christopher Brown, and I will be your host for this exciting journey. This special episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the SUMA conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, earlier in April. Now, our show is dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from across Canada to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, today's guest is Isle Cross Councillor Gerald Roy. So first off, I want to start off with the question that I've started off all my municipal politicians' interviews with, and you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Uh, first of all, I don't consider myself a politician. I'd probably consider myself, myself more of an advocate than anything else. Okay, so, so where did your sense of advocacy come uh, from? Well, um, school. I was on a school SRC uh, committee. Um, I have always uh, took the time to volunteer. And I think it evolved from there. Um, yeah. Uh, Getting involved municipally, though, is a unique ministry, experience. Um, well, it, 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 gradually, I got into... Uh, and then committees and, and boards within the community through volunteering. And then from there, you know, I got onto a few additional boards. Uh, I left uh, the community for uh, continuing my education, went back, got a job to work with young people. And then from there, I was uh, encouraged to run for municipal office, which I did, and got in in 94. So I served from 94 to 2000. And then I took a break. Uh, concentrate on work and my career um, and 2012 I decided to run again so I've been there ever since. So you've seen the evolution of municipal government you have seen uh, back in the 90s I would say it was probably less apathetic towards municipal governments from residents than it is now what do you chalk that change up to? Well I think the demand is greater um, uh, populations in uh, municipalities are growing. I think the, the needs uh, are a little more extended. Um, if you think of mental health and addictions, for instance, uh, but services are not always in the community. And um, um, people, I think young people are more aware and understand now uh, the significance of having to pay taxes and whatnot, and uh, where those taxes go in their community. And I think people are more aware it's because of social media uh, exactly what's going on in their communities and around them, uh, be it the municipal, provincial, or federal, and even world politics. Right? So, Can social media play a double-edged sword, though? Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I'm not trying to um, ask the stupid question, <laughs> but I'll ask the stupid question. <laughs> and I don't think there's any such thing as a stupid question, but um, absolutely. Um, there's, there's the highs of the highs with social media, where you get all the kudos, not personally, but I mean, if you just read in general, right? You look at uh, what's happening with the United States, for instance, and uh, it seems to bring out some of the bad from, um, you know, out of, we didn't even think your friend was, had those opinions about certain individuals, but, and won't say it to you directly in your face, right? But they'll take the time to type it out on their uh, device or on their, you know, their home computers or whatnot. And then, yeah. So, how do you, as a municipal councillor, not fight back against that? Because everyone has the right to voice their opinions, and I exactly. think you and I agree with that. But how do you, as a municipal councillor, look at the issues of the day and look at the people who are the vocal minority? And mm -hmm. I think you will agree that there is a large portion who don't do that, who aren't on social media. I, I try not to get into that, and I keep my circle small. Okay. Um, I'm not into Snapchat. I'm not into all those things. I'll view Twitter every once in a while. I'll do Facebook, but I keep my circle small. Um, there was a time when, you know, I had a thousand friends who were not, actually not friends. You collected Facebook. them like Pokemon. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think just keep your circle small, but at the same time, you respond to uh, what you think needs to be responded to, but not get caught up in uh, discussions where it's a lot of negativity or people are directing their anger towards someone or to yourself you just you know I prefer I've been called out on social media where I've gone to that individual and said you know what I prefer to talk to you face to face and we've done that and I think it's uh, the conversation was more meaningful and I think it was also uh, a lot more personal does respect come into play there yeah, I, I would think so I, I believe so yeah 
Um, but I think it's important that uh, people get an understanding of uh, how you, you feel, but at a level where it's not demeaning or you know, confrontational. I want to talk about your community for a second here, and I want to ask the overarching question before we dive into some issues. If we go talk to 100 people in your community today, would they talk to me more about micro issues, potholes, parks, uh, uh, roads, infrastructure, or would they go with the macro issues? Would they talk about healthcare, uh, education? What would be the main focus on a lot of people's issues in your community, do you believe? Uh, I think it would depend on uh, the demographic. Okay. Uh, if you talk to the young people, um, they're probably going to uh, speak more about communications and, uh, and access to all of that, and probably some education. Um, the older ones, um, retired, will probably talk about taxes and lands and, and uh, uh, services and infrastructure and whatnot. So I, I think it depends on who you speak to. But uh, for Isle Cross, I would think uh, it would be a, a really nice mix of both. And uh, I like to think our community is prog uh, progressive and productive. Um, we've been, uh, to a certain extent, very proactive on a lot of the issues in the community. And I think we've, we've tried to bring in the resources to deal with some of the challenges. So I want to I want to use what you just <clears throat> used about communications and mm -hmm. taxes and sort of ask the poignant question of how do you balance that? Because you don't, and I, I'm not bursting any bubbles here, Gerald, but you don't have en enough money to go around to fix everyone's issues. And you, everyone wants to keep their taxes low, but you know cost of services go up. Everyone mm -hmm. knows that. They all look at budgets, and you know that in particular. How do you see yourself as counselor of balancing the needs of the different people in your community to make sure everyone feels happy, but at the same time knowing not everyone's going to be happy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. That's always the back of mind for me anyway. Um, I certainly can't speak on behalf of the other uh, counselors <coughs> and, and the mayor himself. Um, I always stress the importance and our fiduciary responsibilities to the municipality, okay, to our ratepayers, that we need to make sure that we have a good understanding of taxation, or at least the basic of taxation. And we need to have a good understanding or the basics of uh, financials. And um, You're talking about the residents need to have a yeah. basic understanding. No, no, no. Mayor and council. Okay, okay. And it's our duty to actually um, try to, to get our ratepayers or our community residents to understand how that works. Do you think you've done a good, successful job doing that? I think to a certain extent with our mayor and council. Uh, if uh, somebody phones me with regards to concerns about uh, property taxes and whatnot, I, I try to explain it. I actually take the time. Probably my longest conversation at this convention was with the Sama uh, folks downstairs at the trade show. Okay. Um, you know, taxation and assessments are two different things. And people having to understand how their, uh, their assessments work, I think, help. But again, the communication part, the onus is on the municipality to let their ratepayers know what options they have. So if you're in arrears, you come to pay. So the, the village uh, forgives uh, a certain portion of yeah. that that they're, they're paid in full and on time. So yeah, um, the communication is certainly a uh, vital, uh, very integral part of uh, our duties as elected officials, and uh, we should use uh, social media. We should use local radio, local TV, you know, to communicate uh, some of the projects we're doing. So I, I, we might be guilty of not doing that all the time. I mean, I, I think in Isle of Cross, for instance, uh, we all work full time, and uh, I, I'm using holidays to be here yeah. for my job, and uh, we get involved in other uh, community uh, organizations and. Uh, and whatnot. So, yeah, um, I, I, I think there's always room for improvement when it comes to communication, and uh, it, it'll be, I, I think, evolve over time. So. so let's leave on this question, and this is the million-dollar question to end this interview. What makes the Isle of the Cross such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Well, first, <laughs> <laughs> first of all, um, you probably don't know this, but Isle Cross is the second oldest community in Western Canada. We'll be celebrating 250 years in 2026. Oh, wow. So we're preparing for that. Um, it's on my list of now to come out to. Okay. <laughs> we'll work and live there. We'll certainly uh, invite you for our celebrations, or if you want to come early. To work and live there, um, we have, um, uh, I'll say top-notch integrated uh, service facility. We have, our, our, we're independent school division. We have two schools. We have the health center that's uh, regional. 
So if your wife works in health or in education and your husband's an RCMP officer, yeah. we can house you, we can keep you in the community. We have doctors who've lived in Iowa Cross for 30 plus years, oh, wow. but we are at a regional uh, health center and of course they go out to the outlying communities also. Uh, live, play, raise your children. Uh, we got excellent uh, recreational facilities, amenities and uh, programs. Um, and it's something for everyone, honestly. And uh, we're on a lake, on a peninsula. So you're surrounded by water. Come uh, fish, come boat, come kayak, come canoe, come, come. You're, you're selling me to come out to your community right now because I'm like, I want to go fishing in. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm a big time fisher and uh, you can sit in my fish hut in the winter or you can hop in my boat in the summer. Well, the when I'm there, River, let's go out on the lake. <laughs> the Churchill River is my backyard. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Gerald, thank you so much. Thank you very much. It. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally... As much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.